Hi guys, it's Tracy from My Grandma's Teacups, and today we're going to be starting a series on mixed media. I was at a crop last Saturday, and there were some ladies there that were asking um, what exactly is mixed media, and what do you need to do it, and how do you start, and one of the things about mixed media is that you're probably already doing it. You're probably already mixing medias in your scrapbooking, in your card making, um, when you're putting together canvases. All of that mixed media means is that you're using two or more elements that usually aren't categorized together. So for example, um, if you're doing watercolor paints and stamping, then that's mixed media or if you are um, using flowers and gluing them as embellishments and metal charms onto a, a card, that's mixed media. So I think we have to like not be hung up on the terminology and let it overwhelm us. Mixed media is just our umbrella to tell us that it's okay to use anything we want to get the look that we want on our project. So the very first step that we're going to talk about is gesso and many people are like what is gesso and why do I need it well I'm going to tell you this is the gesso that I use and I think most people tend to go towards this one um, because it's readily available it's in all of your stores it's in Michaels it's in Hobby Lobby it's everywhere and it is a really nice gesso to work with gesso is basically a primer and you want to prime your canvases so that the, um, the inks and the paints don't soak directly into the canvas. And also, if you're working on a journal page, um, it might be in a book that you've already been journaling in, you don't want all of the wetness and the, the inks to, to go through onto your previous work. So gesso is just basically, it's your primer. It also has a lot more uses, so that's why I, I tend to buy my gesso like this because it's my number one item that I use on most of my projects and I think this is like the fourth or fifth one of these that I've gone through um, just because you use it and it's never gonna it's not gonna go bad on you it's just it's perfect gesso is basically uh, it's a white paint like substance um, but it has it's been thickened a little bit with um, it's got different different powders and textures in it but it's it's almost like a chalk like finish and the reason why that's important is because it gives all of your your sprays and your inks and your chalks a really good place to grip onto um, without sinking in so this is our gesso now when you're just beginning you can make your own gesso and there are lots of videos out there on how to make your own gesso but by the time you buy all the products that you're going to need to put into it you're better off just to buy a jug of gesso um, it's going to be something that you're never going to regret buying start with a white gesso because that's going to give you the most use um, you later on you can always buy different colors of gesso. It, it, you can get it in pretty much any color. Um, but when you're first starting out, just use the white gesso. And then if you want, you can add different colors of paint to it or different colors of ink to get different textures. But I would suggest first just working with the white gesso as it is. There's also um, black gesso. Uh, well, obviously there's lots of different colors, but black gesso is probably the second gesso that you're going to buy. Um, so when you're working on, on darker backgrounds, um, I do a lot of um, books that are have black cardstock. So I like the black gesso. Um, it just it makes it easier for me to get my project done quickly. Um, you can also get transparent gesso, which I can't lay my hands on in the studio right now. But that is really nice when you don't want to ruin the um, design paper or the images that you have underneath, but you still need to protect it. Then that's when you would go with a transparent gesso. Not only is gesso a primer, you can also use it to mute your work 
and tie it all together. So on this particular piece, um, I gessoed everything with the white and then I started adding my elements. I continued to add gesso. So you can see here, this, this is a um, Fab Scraps chipboard element. These are metal elements. There's a doily or a crochet doily in there. This is a frame from Michaels and it's more of a doily. These are all handmade flowers. And this is an image from Gecko Gals. So once I had my initial coat down of gesso, then I started spraying in the colors that I knew that I liked with um, an ink spray. And we'll talk about those in one of the next videos. But you can use anything on top of the gesso to start getting your colors. So anything that you have, if you have markers, if you have ink um, refills for your ink pads, you can use that. And you just start laying the colors. And then another really good way to get a muted color is to add water to it. So just spraying it gently with water and dabbing off. The gesso is tough, so you don't have to worry about like destroying the gesso finish off of it. It, it stands up to all this stuff. So then I started um, adding my elements onto it, the doilies and stuff like that, and I just glued them down with regular um, multi-craft glue from the dollar store, or craft medley, sorry, I always get those two mixed up. Um, and I glued them all down, and then I did another layer of gesso, and I built it up. So you can see here where it's built up. And then go back on it with your color, whatever you're using for your colors. And then the top, la top layer, you spray it all down again, and then you can go back and you can actually use the gesso itself to highlight the different areas that you want to, to draw attention to. And it just softens the entire look of the piece. And then finally, I put my flower elements on and I didn't want them to be white and I didn't want them to be touched. I just wanted them to just stand out on their own. So I put them on last and I glued them down along with the, the image that I had colored from Gecko Gals. Oh, awful reflection there. And then the crystals. But 90% of this project is achieved just by using the gesso and my, and my inks. So you're going to want to experiment with it. A good place to start is to go, just to go to the dollar store and pick up some small canvases and just start creating with whatever you have in your stash. Um, scrapbook paper, um, little pieces of lace, anything. Because all you're trying to do is get it down on the canvas, create texture, use the gesso just to give yourself a nice uh, place to work, and then add your colors. So I'm going to challenge all of you to go to the dollar store or if you have one in your stash and make a canvas and using gesso. And once you have it done, I want you to e either email it to me at mygrandmasteacups at gmail.com or you can um, post it on the um, My Grandma's Teacups Facebook page and we'll compare and see how everybody's how everybody's working out with the gesso. If you have any questions about using gesso, then make sure you stop me, send me a message, put a comment down below, and uh, we'll talk talk through it and we'll figure out what you know where you need to go with the gesso. And then we're going to build on it next next time um, with my next pick for multimedia must haves. So for today, your must have is any surface to work on really. Um, the canvas is just quick and easy. Go out and get some basic gesso in white. Okay, so if you have any questions or, or anything, put it in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe to the channel so that we can move on with our next lesson.